Advent. What does it really mean? Advent's observed in many Western Christian churches as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for the celebration of the nativity of Jesus at Christmas. For Christians, the season of Advent anticipates the coming of Christ from two different perspectives. The season offers the opportunity to share an ancient longing for the coming of the Messiah and to be alert for his second coming. However, for that coming, today's gospel is kind of scary if you take it at face value. I mean, think about it. Suffering, dark sun, no moon, stars falling from heaven, powers in heaven shaken up, heaven and earth just passing away, and not knowing when the time will come for Jesus' return. I don't know about you, but that's not how I want to think about the future and the coming. The truly frightening stuff described in Mark, for most of Mark's readers, is not a prediction to frighten future generations, but words of comfort for a generation that used this vivid language the language of nightmares mixed with literal retellings of the kinds of betrayals and threats facing community members to describe what they'd already seen brothers and sisters in Christ going through. Jesus himself wrestled with his own death and resurrection. Although divine, we have to remember that Jesus was also human when he was here on earth with us. Jesus' walk here on earth was one of faith, In keeping with the Father's promise, Jesus simply had to trust in God's promise, just as we do today, that Jesus will return. When we hear in today's gospel, what we hear in today's gospel takes place during the first coming of Christ. It was a time when things were much different than they are today. It is God's assurance about Christ's return that gives us hope. We need to focus on our life now because we don't know when Jesus will return. The waiting is what proves to be most difficult for us since Jesus said, but about that day or hour no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Researchers have estimated that we spend two to three years of our life waiting. We wait at the bank, supermarket, theaters, airports. We wait for our vacations, our paychecks, medical tests. We're always waiting for something. I don't know if you're like me or not, but I don't like to wait. For example, when we have to go somewhere and we're in a rush to get ready, in 15 or 20 minutes, I'm ready to go. But I think that most of you men can relate to me. You wait another 15 or 20 minutes till your wife is ready to go. Right, honey? Something tells me I'm not going to have to wait for an answer once they get off this uh, sermon. (laughs) In our gospel, Jesus says, Keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In anticipation of what the future holds for us, even in our daily lives, can be stressful, yet exciting as well. There are so many exciting things that are going to happen in our lives that we will be thankful for. Some of us are waiting for the birth of a child or a grandchild. Others are excited about an upcoming vacation or maybe visitation from a relative or dear friend at Christmas time. And of course, for the, most of us and the children, Santa Claus. This Advent season provides even more excitement and that is the anticipation and celebration of Christ's birth. For no matter what, we belong to God and the assurance of a continued life even after our time here on earth brings us peace. I know the anticipation that comes with waiting can also cause anxiety and waiting can be a lonely time. But you know what? We don't have to wait alone. We can, re- we can rely on people in our community. Right here in our church community, just look next to you. There's someone there waiting to help you and someone that you can trust. Christ is present in our midst every day, everywhere, every hour, even right now as I speak to you. 
As a community, we can continue to grow together in order to better understand what Christ meant when he said, what I say to you all, keep awake. We are all brothers and sisters in the priesthood of Christ, and through us, we can keep the promise of God alive and well. Now you may ask how? By keeping God in your daily life keeping God in your thoughts as you look at other people, keeping God foremost as we do the work we have been called to do. Don't just make God an occasional once a week activity that you can mark off on your to-do list. We can awaken the Holy Spirit within others by examples we ourselves set every day through giving to others in need, saying kind words, being thoughtful by having faith and speaking about our Savior and having love for all of God's people. But remember, having faith is more than saying, I believe. It's living the belief we have. Jesus said, it's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch, Jesus is telling us, we are the doorkeeper. Be watchful, for living has less to do with the speculation about the end of the world and more to do about carrying out our trust in God's promise. Mark illustrates it in a way that finally makes the date of the end a matter of irrelevance. Readiness has much to do with being ready for life as it has to do with its end. Warren Worsby once said, If life is to have meaning, and if it's God's will is to be done, all of us have to accept who we are and what we are, give it back to God, and thank him for the way he made us. What we are is God's gift to ourselves. What we do with it is our gift to God. There's another gentleman I'd like to quote named John Wooden. He says, be true to yourself, help others, Make each day your masterpiece. Make friendship a fine art. Drink deeply from good books, especially the Bible. Build a shelter against a rainy day and give thanks for your blessings and pray for guidance every day. So what lesson does that leave us here for Advent? It leaves us to stay awake, live in expectation, build a shelter, I'm sorry. Live now as you will when the Son of Man does return, because he will return. Amen.